So not just for the reason that they were originally designed to deal with finding optimization, but also because as a result of the construction, a quadratic is guaranteed to have an extreme value, a relative maximum or a relative minimum. We'll more often look for maxima than minima, but you can do either. These are natural candidates for what are called optimization problems, problems of being able to find the best possible solution to a set of constraints, where in particular we're going to look at this within the context of the types of things that quadratics were defined for, that is, optimizing rectangles. And to do this, we have a bit of a process we can follow where we start by just going through the steps carefully, going through the problem carefully, and being able to determine what it is we know and what it is that we need to know. Where from there, you want to be able to put some given information, put some relations, conditions together in such a way that you can deter that you can express the unknown, the thing you want to find in terms of what you have. And then with that, you push things into a quadratic form. And once you have a quadratic form, you look for the optimal value of that quadratic, which is at the vertex, where this is a process that you can do more generally in calculus. You can do this for more than just quadratic things. But for here, because of the nice properties of quadratics, we get to do it using a bit of algebra instead. And this looks like quite a lot. It is a fair bit, but let's take a look at an example here to understand that it's a little bit less intense than maybe it looks right now. So for this example, suppose you have 180 feet of fencing to enclose a yard, and we want to find the dimensions which would maximize the area of the yard. And this is a classic problem in this vein. This is the sort of thing that you'll see here as the sort of thing you might see in pre-calculus. You'll probably see it in Calc 1 if you go on to Calc 1, and you might even see it again beyond there. It's just the sort of thing that comes up a lot because it's really good for building an understanding of how these types of things work and how we can work with them using various techniques. So here, what we're trying to find for that first step is the value A, and what we have is the value P. The perimeter is 180 feet because we have 180 feet of fencing. If we're looking for the biggest area, it's going to use all the fencing. You can't make something better by taking away options. It just doesn't work out that way mathematically, as I hope you can guess. And often in that first step, a nice way to visualize what's going to happen, a nice way to understand where this is going, is when you can to draw a nice little picture for yourself, where obviously this isn't quite to scale but you get the idea, and for the sake of consistency, I'll call the horizontal sides x and the vertical sides y. Not that it makes a huge difference, but with these ideas in mind, we can then redefine a and p in a more useful way, that the area is x times y, and the perimeter is 2x plus 2y, using known formulas, using known information, about our rectangles. And with this, we're then going to be able to get to that second step of expressing something that's unknown using known information because we can solve that perimeter formula for one of x or y and replace it in there, which is actually gonna put it straight into a quadratic form. And we can actually solve that either for x or y. I'm gonna solve for y here, y here so we can get our quadratic in terms of x, but it really doesn't matter. Either works. In this case, if I solve for y, I have 180 is equal to 2x plus 2y. I'm going to subtract over the x, divide out the 2, and we will get that y is going to be equal to 90 minus x. And when we have that y is equal to 90 minus x, that means that for our third step to get it into that quadratic flavor we want, we would have that the area is equal to x times y, x times 90 minus x, or with a little bit of distribution and rearranging to put it into the more standard form, a is equal to negative x squared plus 90x. And now that we have this in our right form, we have this in our right amount of pieces, we can answer, we can get our extreme value. We're here because a is negative. In particular, a is negative one. We have that we know it's going to be a maximum.
So we're on the right track for sure. And here we also have that B is equal to 90. So we can use our vertex formula there. In particular, what we are looking for is the value not, not P, where did that P come from? F of negative B over 2A, because we're trying to find the maximum value for this along with our dimensions. And for this, that is going to end up being F of B, so negative 90 over negative, or excuse me, not negative there, I don't want so many negatives, 2 times negative 1, or F of 45. So our absolute maximum is going to occur when X is equal to 45, and that maximum value plugging 45 into here will be 45 squared with a negative plus 90 times 45. That's going to end up being negative 2025 plus, what would that be, 4050, I think. But the long and short of it is we're going to end up with a maximum area of 2025 feet. And that in order to achieve it, x is going to have to be 45 feet, and y is also going to have to be 45 feet, because x, that vertex, occurs at 45. The vertex occurs at x equals 45, and if you check this here to be sure, you plug x back in, you'd have 90 minus 45 is 45, where it's a relationship I've mentioned before, and it's a relationship that'll be developed better when you get to calculus, or if you get to calculus for that matter, but the optimal type of rectangle is always a square. Anyway, that's a good place to stop here for talking about quadratics. So next, let's talk about more complex, more involved things, things with more terms. Let's look in 3.2 at polynomial functions.